Good morning, YouTube friends and family. Hope everyone's doing well. Greetings from El Paso, Texas. I um, I made it to El Paso last night. I was supposed to pick up one of my employees and a whole bunch of oil and filters and parts and head out to the yard and do some, some repairs little PMs and stuff like that and kind of assess the next group of trucks that we're going to go through and get them together but um, my employee started feeling sick yesterday he found out that he had a close interaction with someone that later tested positive for COVID and his symptoms are very COVID like so instead of trying to meet up with him last night and um, that's a beautiful bike. Um, I gave it another day. Um, his, all the stuff was in his pickup truck, and um, I know the, I know the code to unlock his door. So I told him, look, man, I'll, I'll get a room. Let the stuff sit in your truck another day. So if you did contaminate it, it'll, it'll give another day for the, the virus to die, and I'll swing by and pick up the parts and you know go get at it myself um, I'm not afraid to get dirty and crawl under trucks and grease them and change the oil I got a starter to change and I got an air leak to chase down stuff like that um, but that kind of brings me to, to the topic um, you know a couple comments and, and private messages that you know it seems like my videos tend to take like a negative uh, spin on things so let me it, it's kind of a lot of things to cover in in one video those of you guys that have been watching my videos know that I came from the oil field um, I also had an equipment rental business I have been I have not received a paycheck from another company for about 20 years now um, my paychecks for the last 20 years have been coming from businesses that I own. So I've been doing this for a little while, guys. And, you know, it has its ups and downs. Um, you know, I've, I've taken my family on what most people would call dream vacations. And, you know, every year we were taking one. Um, but I've also gone stretches where I've gone 18 months without taking a paycheck. And so it goes both ways. And the key is to be ready for it because when it comes, it, it, it hits and it hits hard. And so when I point out things that are not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not advantageous to the entrepreneur. Um, I'm just pointing out the landmines for you guys, okay? I'm pointing out, you know, the, the risks and where you're going to lose money. And, you know, it's up to you guys to find the way around that or, or how you can, you know, find a way to still make it work and make money. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't do that for you. So I can tell you that as you look at any business, you always have to look at worst case scenario. Don't ever plan on best case scenario. First of all, best case scenario happens once in a lifetime. And usually when it does happen, most people aren't ready for it and they miss the opportunity anyways. But the best case scenario is very rare to have happen. Um, worst case scenario, Unfortunately, worst case scenario, I've learned, comes about every five years. The, the, the market, the economy, all of that cycles back and forth that way. And so we plan for it. Um, me personally, I, um, I've learned some hard mistakes. Um, you know, the one with, with the oil field right now, I should have diversified. Whether it was within oil field and offer other services not related to trucking um, 
you know, services that are more production based because production keeps going, believe it or not. Everyone thinks that oil field stops when prices of oil drop. Now, in this last year where oil went negative, for the first time in a long time, a lot of companies did shut in welds. Usually they don't shut in when oil drops a few bucks. They, they just stop drilling or, or what you would call exploring for more oil. They, they kind of sit back and let their existing oil produce. Um, in fact, in most cases, when the price of oil drops, oil companies produce more oil. It's kind of like if you take a cut and pay at another job, you try to get more hours, same thing. You'll have to excuse me. When I go from West Coast out to the desert, my sinuses get even worse and I'll get these crazy coughing attacks. So anyway, and so why do I post the things that are negative? Um, it's kind of like this. You get, you get some kind of marketing call. That person on the phone is designed to build interest and get you excited and get you thinking about it. And, and that person is a lot of the YouTubers you see now. You know, I watch other YouTube channels, um, not because I feel like I'm in competition with them. I've, I've said it before. I'm not in competition with other YouTubers. I'm not in competition with other truckers. Um, you know, we're colleagues and we're all in this together. And the reason for my videos is to help existing truckers and soon to be truckers make better decisions, um, take better loads, make more money. Um, in the end, if we all kind of help raise the, um, if we all help raise the rate, then what will happen is we all benefit. And so it's best we all get on the same channel, right? On the same page, whatever you want to call it, and make more money. That's the nature of my videos. It's the nature of why I started the channel. And so my mistake wasn't diversified enough. Um, Maybe had I put some trucks over the road a couple years ago, you know, the swing to over the road from oil field would have been easier. Um, on this trip, you know, I, I got I got the coveralls. I'm gonna be under trucks, greasing them, changing oil. Um, I think I got brakes to do on one. I still gotta look at it and see. I got a leaky airbag. Um, I've got some PM stuff and, and a couple repairs to do. And so I'm gonna be getting grungy. Um, you know, two years ago, a trip like this would have probably included, you know, a first class airline ticket out here. Um, you know, I'd probably be teeing off with a company man and then gonna go have steaks and beer afterwards. You know, instead, I don't have shop personnel at this point, so I gotta go do some maintenance myself. You know, and that was that was the mistake I made. I was not diversified enough to to stay busy when when oil field collapsed. And so it's a lesson learned for me for the next one, right? Um, you know, even now, as we as we discuss box truck and and you know dry van, flatbed, step deck. You know, I, I do want to diversify and get into other other lines of work, but I gotta tell you guys, box truck does not interest me or excite me. And I'm sure that's reflected in my videos. And so in one video, someone said, you know, that they've got 10 trucks running, including some owner operators, and they're doing really well. You know, I'm not here to argue with, with that. And, and congratulations, brother. I mean, if you guys are doing well and, and you're expanding and everything's great, you know, I'm happy for you. I, I truly and legitimately am happy for you. Um, I, I will, and I'll admit when I'm wrong, <laughs> you, um, you stated that the vans are to go install TVs and stuff like that. I didn't even know Amazon did that. And so I Google searched it after I, I read your comment and yes, 
um, Amazon offers that service. However, that's not what most of these vans are out doing. Um, Amazon, a couple years ago, right about the time they cut ties with UPS and FedEx, um, they they um, purchased 2,000 of these vans and put them in like 25 markets. And what they do is they go to entrepreneurs like us and say, you know, come in with a $10,000 buy-in. They want you to have like a minimum credit score. I don't know what it is. Um, and they want you to have like 30,000 available to you either liquid or in available lines of credit. And the, you know, what I've been told is the lines of credit could be, you know, a line of credit against your home or, you know, credit cards or just combined credit where you've, where you've got between cash and credit, like 30 grand available to you. And so with that being said, um, those vans are intended to replace the work where they are hauling stuff to um, to the post office. Um, the idea behind the post office is the postal service will deliver cheaper than UPS will. Um, and obviously they, they got box truck operators willing to operate for under two bucks a mile where they do 200 miles one way, 200 miles back, and you make 400 bucks so you really end up at a dollar a mile and apparently box truck operators are willing to do it and so it's it's an emerging market with Amazon but what I want to point out to you guys is it's not a long-term market um, it's it's gonna collapse and let me pause this real quick so I can start my feeling all right and so as I was saying the market is not a growing one it's a collapsing one um, as Amazon continues to add these vans and convince more people to partner with them um, and you know I find it ironic they use that term partner um, because we have to consider they they cut ties with FedEx they cut ties with UPS and they didn't really seem to care what how, what effect that was gonna have on them and so likewise with you guys, you know, you go out and buy yourself a box truck, two or three, and you start a business. If you think for a minute that Amazon's gonna care that your business is gonna die when they build this next fulfillment center that's gonna have those, those vans running around. If you think for a minute that Amazon takes that into account, you're poorly mistaken. Um, they, they, they look at their bottom line, not yours. They, they could care less about yours. Um, and it's it's evident in the the rates. I, I show you guys the rates. You guys see those team loads for a dollar thirty a mile. They don't care. It, it's not you know if someone's willing to take it. They'll if someone's willing to take it at a dollar forty five and it's consistently selling out at a dollar forty five. Really soon it'll come out at a dollar thirty five. And if someone takes that at a dollar thirty five, really soon it'll come out at a dollar twenty five. If no one takes it at $1.25 and that ends up going at $1.35, it'll fluctuate back up. Their system is built to do that. It's exactly how it works. And I'm done. I can jump off real quick. So, don't think for a minute that, you know, you're guaranteed anything. Um, you know, if you drive by a, a fulfillment center and you see 20 box trucks there loading, you look at that as a gold mine, you know, a big, vast ocean of opportunity. Amazon, on the other hand, looks at it like, this is where we're spending a lot of money. And so this is the next viable location to 
bring in some of our vans and save money. Um, and, and believe me, that's that's how they work. That's that's how these types of corporations think. And so, are my videos negative? <sighs> think of it. Think of it like you get ready to go buy a car, and the salesman that that you talked to that took you for a drive and you got the new car smell and sometime during the drive you and the salesman figured out you had something in common whether it's you eat the same food or you golf at the same place or whatever you feel like you developed some kind of friendship there so those are your YouTube videos that you know those are your YouTube videos that, hey, look at me, I just bought a truck and I'm making $1,000 a day. Hey, look at me, box truck, life is great. Um, those are those videos. And then you come inside and sit down and the sales manager, even though even though the, the sales guy, you think he's he's the one that's negotiating, the sales manager is the one that comes at you with, with numbers. You know, this is what the vehicle's worth. You know, what can you afford in payments, yada, yada, yada. And then in the end, when you go sit down with the finance manager, he's the one that points out, okay, you're buying this vehicle, but you know, you're not getting the extended warranty. That's not part of the package. If you want that, this is gonna cost you. Um, your credit score isn't great. So we didn't put you in with, you know, Ford Motor Credit. We put you in with this, you know, B-level finance company, and so your interest is higher, and the way we got your payments to be so low is you're not getting five years at 0%, you're getting seven years at 9%. Um, and I'm that guy, I guess. I'm the guy that's telling you the ugly. But what I'm doing, guys, is I'm pointing out the landmines that lie ahead. For those of you that are looking to get into it, that, you know, think, hey, all I need is, you know, 12 to 15 grand, go buy one of these things at auction and go get some insurance and I'm in business. I'm the guy that's gonna point out, look, insurance is expensive. Look at that before you buy the truck. I'm the guy that's gonna point out, look, you know, yes, you're gonna, you're gonna make 400 bucks on this load, but it's gonna take you all day long to do it. And by the time it's said and done, you're gonna travel 400 plus miles for 400 bucks. It's a losing proposition. I'm that guy. And I'm the one that's gonna point out the legality of, maybe not the legality, the economics of, of where you're gonna be with this thing. And I'm not trying to discourage anyone from jumping in. By all means, jump in um, and if, I can help educate you a little bit and you jump in a little more in tune with how the system works, um, it helps. Why does Amazon make it so easy to get into their to their uh, system? I mean, I've gotten on with some of the biggest oil producers in the world. Um, in fact, the second largest oil producer, I have a contract with them and it's not easy to do. Some of these places take up to a year to get you on their approved vendor list, you know, and then it's even more difficult to get on their preferred vendor list. That's a whole nother battle. Um, and so when I first started hauling for Amazon, I was like, God, I can't believe, you know, as big as Amazon is, um, it took three days. I, I went to their application, filled it out, sent, sent a request over to my insurance agent, you know, we had to make a couple adjustments to my policy, uploaded it, and bam, three days later I could book loads. And I kept wondering to myself, how in the world is it so easy to get on with them? Well, it's so easy to get on with them because they're hoping to get new people. Um, they're hoping to get inexperienced people that'll take loads that nobody else would. That's what it boils down to. You, you need to consider that. And so, I jumped in as a more experienced carrier and math doesn't lie guys. You look at stuff and it, it doesn't make sense. I, 
I quickly went from power only to, to trailer required, um, that's like a no brainer to me. 500 bucks a month for a trailer to rent, they're like 300 bucks a month to buy. Um, I just don't want to get into more debt at the moment. Um, you know, I may sell a few of my tanks and buy some trailers. That'll make more sense. But at 500 bucks a month, in some cases, one load makes that payment. The difference of doing a power only load, let's just say from Los Angeles to Dallas, the rate difference could be more than that 500 bucks. No brainer. No brainer. And if I don't find any Amazon loads, I can find loads somewhere else. And so someone asked me if I would, I, I, I made a video, I think I named it something like, not all Amazon markets are good. And I think this person kind of asked, well, then what's a good market? And, you know, I, I don't like box truck at all, guys. Um, I don't. I, I do the box truck videos and I guess you could say they're, they're kind of biased because I don't like them. Um, but I do them as a, as a service to my viewers. I do them to help you guys get, get what you're looking for, right? Nonetheless, um, my, um, my outlook on them is my own, but a viewer asked, commented, you know, which market is good. It's difficult for me to say that because I'm not familiar with your market. And so just going by the numbers, um, per mile, you know, per mile rate relative to the miles, I really don't like any of the loads I see. Now, I have learned that some of these box truck loads are under contract and so we don't see them. What we're seeing is only the over overload or the, yeah, whatever overloads their contracts is kind of what ends up on the spot market. That's kind of issue number one for me because you're getting the leftovers and there's not a guarantee you're always gonna have leftovers. Issue number one. Issue number two, is you don't get anything to come back. Um, and a lot of these loads lead into little one horse towns, kind of like the one I live in. And odds are you're not gonna get any freight there coming back. So I also don't know the, the you know, geographically what your market's like. Um, if you go in a certain direction, you know, it could be 250 miles and it pays four bucks a mile and you're like, hey, that's great. But then you find out it's all uphill up a winding road and, and that drive is going to take you all day long. You know, it looks good on paper, but it may not be good. Only you know what's good. Um, and so instead of asking me what is a good market for box truck, I think a better question would be if you had to get into box truck, what would be your plan? How would you do it? So without having an authority. Let's just say I couldn't get a CDL. And so my only real alternative would be uh, a non-CDL box truck or a non-CDL hotshot. Um, honestly, I think non-CDL hotshot would make more money, um, but the capital investment is much higher. Um, a pickup truck's not designed to go a half million miles and a box truck will. Um, so what would I do? Marketing. Market research is first and foremost, it, it's, it's business 101. You know, how do you determine if your business is even viable? You have to look for your market. So whatever market you're in, like right now I'm in El Paso, Texas. Um, there's no Amazon facility here yet. They're building one and I don't know if they're gonna have a need for box truck here. But let's just say it's coming and it's supposed to be done this summer. So I need to make a decision so I can be ready. What do I do? I start contacting brokers and or um, uh, dispatch services. I know some of the load boards will not allow you to get access to them without a motor carrier authority number. That's kind of jacked up because you can't, you can't get your feet wet and look. Um, and so contact yourself a, a dispatch service and tell them, I'm looking to get into the box truck business. This is where I'm based out of what do you think? 
Now, mind you, talk to a dispatcher that gets paid percentage, not a flat fee. Because someone that gets paid a flat fee, they're going to tell you to sign on. And even if they only get a couple weeks of your money and you're like, dude, you haven't gotten me anything in two weeks, you know, I'm going to fire you. He got two weeks worth of pay out of you. Um, the dispatch service I use, their, their um, commission, it, it's a percentage. And so these last couple weeks that my trucks haven't run, I don't get a bill for them. And so likewise, find yourself a, a, a dispatch service and tell them, I have box trucks. What's my market like? And what's the market like for loads coming back? And so spend a little time with them, let him do a little scratching into the market for you and kind of show you what the existing loads look like. So if there's a market there, you know, he'll tell you, you know, there's, there's loads here, but they go real cheap or yeah, there's loads or not really. And so if you can find work through a dispatcher, then making the expense of getting on the Amazon load board is more justifiable because if you get on with Amazon and you quickly realize the miles aren't adding up to the money I need, um, you can make the switch or you can combine the two. If you book yourself a load going, you know, I'm in, I'm in El Paso. So if I book a load going to Lordsburg, New Mexico, and I'm going there Tuesday, then I can get my, my dispatcher to start trying to look for something coming back. Can I get a load coming back? And that way, like they say, the hammer is hitting in both directions. You're not coming empty on the backswing. Um, that to me is the biggest flaw in, in box truck. The other thing you need to consider guys is if you jump in with Amazon only and Amazon makes that move where they bring in their own vans and they don't need box trucks in your market anymore, consider that everyone else in your market is gonna also be out of work suddenly and they're gonna flood the open market, the load boards with trucks and they're gonna be accustomed to these dirt cheap Amazon rates. They're gonna ruin that market um, or they're gonna sell them. So all of a sudden, if you wanna get rid of your box truck, the market's gonna be flooded with them. Um, right now I have like 20 tanks sitting at my yard and I don't wanna put them to work because the rate's just too cheap. And so they're sitting there. The problem is in a good market, those tanks, I could probably get 20 to 25,000 for, you know, if I were to put new liners in them and paint them, I could probably get 30 for them. Right now I'm lucky to get 10. Why? Because everybody else is selling them. The, if, if you got 10 grand, you can go buy yourself a decent clean tanker that may need a liner. Um, and so the, I'm, I'm in the same boat you would be in if your market suddenly dries up. That's kind of why my videos have the, the tone that they do. I'm not trying to be negative, I'm not trying to talk you guys out of it. By all means, you know, I, I, I am the first one to congratulate someone when they do well. Um, I, I admire success um, both, both in my personal life and, and in business. If one of my competitors is kicking it in the tail, um, in fact, one of my biggest competitors where, where we fought hand in hand for, for the same customer, um, you know, they're still doing well. And one of my employees went to work there. I congratulate them when I hear they got new work. I'm not bitter. I'm not trying to throw salt in their game. You know, they've taken over a lot of my older accounts because I don't have the trucks. I can't go do the work. Um, you know, I wish them well. In fact, I've gotten a couple calls where people are like, hey, do you have any trucks? Nope, call this company. They're, they're doing really well. They've, they've got trucks available. Um, and there's no bitterness there. And, and likewise, if you guys come in, I'm not trying to talk you out of it because I think you're gonna somehow come compete against me. If I get all my trucks running, it's 20 trucks. And if I spread my trucks all over the US, I won't even have one truck per state. I don't make an impact anywhere. Um, and so no one cares about me. Likewise, if you guys jump in, I I'm not gonna care. It's not gonna affect me. I would rather you come in after watching my videos and request a higher rate. I would rather you come in and take quality loads so that, you know, the trash at the bottom of the barrel, you know, these shippers and brokers, you know, get the picture and, and they start paying it better. That's what my videos are designed to do. Let's let's all make more money. Anyways, so yeah, my, my attitude may sound like it's negative. I'm a very positive person. 
Um, I'm full of drive. I'm, I'm full of, of energy. Um, I'm probably one of the hardest working people you're ever going to meet. Um, you know, honestly, this whole, you know, ELD only allowing you to do 70 hours a week. It's almost like a vacation for me. Um, you know, it, I, I'm a workaholic. I, I could work 18, 19 hour days every day. Um, I don't do it these days because I'm behind the wheel of one of the semi trucks. So obviously I force myself to, to sleep as much as I need to, but you know, that's, that's just who I am. My negative, my negativity, if it's perceived as that, it's just me pointing out where the landmines are. And I don't, I don't want to see you guys go step on one. That's, that's what it is. Anyways, um, I just pulled up to a place. If you guys are ever in El Paso, Texas, off of Montana, there's a little hole in the ground called, uh, Restaurante Ensenada, their chile relleno with chorizo is outstanding. Like I said, it's a hole in the wall. I found this place quite by accident, and now I can't pass through town without having breakfast here. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, guys. So I don't know why I said chile relleno. Um, it's actually huevos rancheros with chorizo. It's an excellent plate.